Uh, so my name is Justin. Uh, I am a aspiring wine drinker. I, I drink wine, but I'm, I'm ready to do better. And I've missed the experience of going out, having someone explain it to me instead of just like rolling up to HEB and getting a bottle. Luck has it, uh, I have a super handsome and very intelligent wine friend. His name is Stephanie. He's the general manager over at uh, Barley Wine. And he's also uh, Stephen slash wine divine. Uh, you can introduce yourself, man. Okay, so <laughs> uh, I, I've known Justin for a while. Um, my name is Stefan Davis. I work as the general manager and wine buyer at Marley Swine. Um, I am certified WSET level two and level one in the Guild of Masters Sommelier, which isn't really saying much, but... That's saying a whole lot, actually. Uh, yeah, but I enjoy wine. I buy it, um, and I, I really like enjoy talking about it and sharing with people. Uh, one of my greatest joys is actually just selling wine to people and sort of getting them exposed to a new idea and a new awakening of a uh, wine experience. So this is a, uh, this is perfect. Thank you for having me. It's perfect. Because I don't know anything about it. So Stefan's been kind enough to send me a couple bottles. So one we're looking at today uh, is it's pink and it yeah. has a cork. It's pink. So you may remember yeah. this emoji from earlier. Oh, uh, just an expertly opened this bottle earlier, which is great. We, I do that off camera as much as, as when it's not beneficial, <laughs> just for my own. So this is from a producer called Klaus Prissinger. This is his 2019 Rosa Libre. Uh, it is a rosé. It's in a nice slender bottle. And it is uh, made from all organic grapes, which is... I'm uh, reading it. This producer uh, produces white sparkling rosé and uh, mostly uh, red grape varietals. Um, but the one that we have in front of us is... Uh, made from 80% the Zweigelt and 20% Saint Laurent, which is uh, two of the three main red varietals in Austria, typically grown in the more southern region, southeastern region of Austria. Um, you say those are reds, and it is definitely pink. Yeah, it's made in a rosé style. So uh, rosé can be sort of uh, made in several different ways, but this one was basically the uh, grapes are brought to the vineyard. Um, they are crushed and thrown uh, with all the contents, skins and juice into a uh, fermenter. And then they, for a small period of time, uh, rest on those skins, extracting a little color from them. And then the skins are removed pretty quickly afterwards. So yeah. all they want is that color, uh, a little bit in there, and then uh, skins are removed. And then the rest of the wine ferments uh, into a rosé style. Uh, just one of the styles of making rosé. Uh, so what is this, uh, I'm, I mean, it's a million degrees outside. So it's definitely summertime. Like you're not going to do me dirty and give me some like heavy, Absolutely. sweaty wine. Typically rosés are perfect for the summer. Um, and they have just a little bit more content because of the color extraction, but most of the time they are crisp and lively and, uh, just meant to be drunk. Uh, you know, either without food or with the beginning courses of food. Um, and also in the Texas heat. I am a massive advocate for rosé and white wine in the state of Texas for most of the year. I mean, typically it doesn't get below. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, so, it's all you know, summer. So do, you, yeah. do you just pour it in a regular wine glass? Like you're... Exactly. Pour it in your Yeti. Uh, <laughs> I also have like the... Yeah, uh, the, the white wine glass will do perfectly fine. You is, know, that like, is that one? Is that it? Is that what I get? That's, that's it. I was nervous. I grabbed them all. Oh my gosh. That's a, that's a, <laughs> good this one. What happened to your horn? <laughs> I, was, I was trying to keep the bits separate. I, I got it. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll do it. Don't at me. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, white, white wine glass is, is totally fine. You know, 16 ounces is standard. Um, <laughs> you guys are really generous over barley time with your 16 ounce wine pours. Yeah. 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 The whole bottle in there. Perfect. <laughs> So yeah, as you can notice, I mean, the, the wine is tinted a rosé color, depending yeah. on the color of the red grape varietal that they're using and the extraction time that they're putting on the skins uh, determines the coloring factor of the, the wine uh, in a rosé wine. Um, so, I mean, this one is really beautiful, kind of orangey, salmon-y color. Yeah, like um, for sure. Yeah, yeah. and so when, when we talk about tasting with our it's eyes first, better. When you, when you pour a raisin in your glass, it's a great time to sort of look at that quality of, of extraction and see like, 
oh, that's, that's, that's pretty cool, you know? Like, it's that, more orange than, like, it, you, 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 you dismiss it pink, and then you kind of like, I guess it is, like, it's got an orangey, like, uh, like yeah. the hokey into sunset. Exactly. So if you've ever heard of an orange wine, that's basically the wine made in a rosé style. Now you're not talking like Mad Dog like orange grapes. wine. Not Mad Dog, although we've all been there. Don't pretend yeah. like you haven't. I'm just so happy to be here instead of there then. Exactly. It's, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I'm going to drink it. Uh, it smells good. It's, uh... Exactly. So this, this is a cool wine. As I mentioned before, it's kind of a biodynamic wine. They, they use native yeast to uh, ferment the wine. And in addition to that, Ooh. It's sort of kind of funkier rosé. It's uh, got like a... Uh... Ah, and like the nicest way it leans towards like a sour beer almost. Okay, so I'm glad you said something. Like that back of the tongue, yeah. Because if you think about like pickle brine or yes. something like that, like a sauerkraut or a pickle brine, it has a little bit of that going on with it in addition to like wine and fruit. So, that is, you nailed it. Like you, like you were a professional at this, dude. You nailed it. Thank you. I mean, the, the thing about wine is that sometimes it can transcend like the, the normal traditional characteristics of what you think wine is, which is why oh. tasting wine at the at Barley Swine and other restaurants that carry sort of experimental wines can really open up your your um, perception of wine and sort of on your horizons. Uh, well, so I, I know the answer to this, but uh, to say like, you know, I'm like, I'll roam it out. I don't want to go. I don't want to make a reservation of Barley Swine, right? Like, ha, like, I know how I got this. How do, how do the people get this wine? Can they get it from you? They can get it from me. Well, they can get it online. So pop online uh, to Marley's Wine website, and there will be a link to our uh, takeout menu. Click that link, and takeout food is available, um, but you can also order alcohol uh, to be picked up um, Friday through Sunday. So um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday from 5 to 8.30 typically is our pickup window. Um, but you know, I encourage a lot of people, if you like the wine list and you like sort of these more experimental wines, there's a description with all of the wines online. So you can pick one wine or 25 wines. It doesn't matter. You can, you can pick whatever you want. Um, you know, at half the cost of what you norm would normally get it at the restaurant. And, That's crazy. Uh, so it's cheaper to take out wine from you than, than it, is. it is to get it there. That's right. And you're doing these videos to tell us what they are anyway. So it's like win-win. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. I've just exposed you to two of the of the options online. Get them while it's still hot in Texas, which is kind of a joke because yeah. get it before he sends them all to me to drink. Although I'm, you know, I'll take some. Exactly. So yeah. Uh, so what do I do? What do I do with food for this? I didn't mean to jump to the thing, but like, so give me, give me like, because you guys do a lot of like fermentation pickle stuff. Yeah, exactly. So it would oh, go, it would go nicely with uh, pickled items. I mean. With this one, uh, with this bottle, this bottle's just gonna get a straw in it for later. It's not going, it's not going anywhere. For rosé, I usually like to say uh, again with the in the same vein as the as the white wine, like a nice salad. Mm -hmm. But when you add a fruit to that salad, like a peach, like a roasted peach, or like yeah. a, a marinated smoked strawberry, something like that, that rosé really kind of ties into that fruit really nicely and brings that out too. Again, a nice like citrus based vinaigrette is always good with that. Um, your, just, your, uh, your vibe of like smoke or cooked fruit, like that, that's what this is. That, 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 that's, that's it. That's brilliant. Exactly. So yeah, if you're, if you're grilling whatever vegetables or meat, just throw, throw your fruit on there too. It's, it, it'll be good. Um, in addition to that, rosé can start getting into sort of lighter, uh, proteins. Uh, oh, yeah. fish is fine. You know, now we're getting into more of like a, like a, a red fish or like a, like a salmon, even like a salmon or like a tuna. In addition to that, you can start doing pork too, uh, or chicken. So um, okay, yeah, I mean, pork. I like, dude. Why not, dude? It's a crazy time. Like, go nuts. I trust yeah. you. I wouldn't be here on my own. Do like an herb rub and do some type of sweet glaze and get that fatty pork chop and get the wine on the porch and you're all good to go. You know, between you and the barley swine and wine, like it's gonna be okay. I it's feel like we're gonna be okay. It's it's gonna be fine. Just breathe and uh, look to your loved ones for.